Good day everyone. Today we shall be considering partial fraction. By the way, this is Gifted Brain aka Saizu, first in Africa, sixth in the world. Rule number three of our partial fraction, which says that to reach quadratic factor on the denominator of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, which is not factorizable to linear factors, there corresponds a partial fraction of the form ax plus b all over ax squared plus bx plus c. And let me explain what this rule is trying to say. You know, obviously, if we have a partial fraction, for instance, something like x plus x plus 3, for instance, all over x squared plus, uh, uh, let's say, 5x uh, plus 6, for instance, now. To solve this question, first of all, I have to write it as x plus 3, and then try factorizing the denominator. Here, if you factorize the denom denominator, you will have x plus 2, x plus 3 and then this is what you will now use to say a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 3 stuff like this and that's because the, this denominator here is factorizable but we can have another form of a uh, 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 partial fashion where the uh, denominator is not factorizable let's look for instance now let's look at this now here we have 2 x plus 3 over x plus 1 into back at x plus 2, x squared plus 2, x plus 5. Now, the first thing to do, first of all, is to solve it to rule 1, to know if you divide first. Obviously, from there, I'm not, I'm not going to divide because the degree of numerator is 1, and the degree of the de uh, denominator, if you expand it, will give you s to power 3. So, you will not divide there. So, you know, to every linear factor, first of all, there corresponds a partial fraction of the form a. I have one linear factor there, which is the x plus 1. So, that will be a over x plus 1, first of all. And then plus, now if you try factorizing this x squared plus 2x plus 5, it will not be factorizable. So this will just give us bx plus c. I'm not going to say ax plus b because a has been used here. A has been used here, so you can't use what has been used. So you go, to, you use the next letter, which is b, then plus c. If a and b had been used, you want to see x plus z on and on that to do. So this is what we would have, x squared plus 2x plus Plus five. This is what this question is trying. This rule is trying to say. Now let's take example one under this rule. So this is our example four. Example four um, is a continuum continuation of uh, well of our previous rule. So I don't want to call it example one. Let's call it example four. Okay. So from here, this is our question. All I just need to do is again is to check our rule number one. As you look at your rule number one, do you think you need to divide here? The degree of the numerator is 2. Why on expanding the denominator, the degree is 3. So we will not divide. Since the numerator is actually lesser than, we will not divide. So here, what we have, if I'm, if I'm to separate the partial fraction, the first factor I have here, which is x squared plus 2x plus 5, it's not factorizable. You can try factorizing it. You see that it's not factorizable. So here, it will be ax plus b, since a had not been used, all over x square plus 2x plus 5 then plus now the next i have a linear factor the x minus 1 so c over x minus 1 so this is what we have the next thing i will just do is to join these two by finding the lcm obviously the lcm will be x square plus 2x plus 5 then into x minus 1 and then if you say x squared plus 2x plus 5 goes into the denominator you left with x minus 1 multiplied by ax plus b so i have ax plus b multiplying x minus 1 and then plus x minus 1 now goes into the denominator will give me x squared plus 2x plus 5 then times c so c multiplying x squared plus 2x plus 5 and then I will write the left hand side I will write the left hand side so now we have a common denominator so I'm going to eliminate the common denominators eliminate this and also eliminate this so at the end of the day we'll be left with okay so this is what we'll be left with now to solve now I will use my normal method of uh, eliminating. Take the linear factor, any linear factor you can see, and equate it to zero. 
the fact the factor I can see is s minus one. So I will equate s minus one to zero. So I say s minus one equals zero. Obviously, you get that x is equal to one. Yeah. So we put you say let x be equal to one. Then on this side we have three into one square plus eight into one plus thirteen. And on this side, we would have a into 1 plus b all into 1 minus 1 plus c into 1 square plus 2 into 1 plus 5. Uh, yes, on this right hand side, 1 minus 1 will give me 0. So 0 times everything here will just be eliminated. So on this left hand side, we have. 1 plus 2 plus 5, which is 8, so times C. So we have 8C here. While on this left hand side, so this is the right hand side. So the left hand side now we would have 13 plus 8, then plus 3. That will give me 24. So at the end of the day, dividing both sides by 8 will give me C being equal to 3. So I've gotten my value of C, dividing both sides by 3. The next thing now again, another linear factor I have here is, is we have here ax plus b. So that x is a linear factor equated to zero. So x being equated to zero. So I'll say let x again now. This is the second thing I'm doing now. So let x, let x be equal to zero. Here we have 3 into 0 square plus 8 into 0 plus 13 is equal to a into 0 plus b into brackets 0 minus 1 plus c into 0 square plus 2 into 0 plus 5 in bracket as well. At the end of the day, a times 0 will go, I will left with just b. And 0 minus 1 here is minus 1. So you have b multiplied minus 1, that will give me minus b. Why? Here we have 0 square is 0, plus 2 times 0 is 0 again, then 5. So we have 5c left on this part. Is equal to here, and we have 13. But obviously, we've gone to get the value of c, that c is 0. Since c is 0, c actually is equal to that what we got in this part, that c is, c, sorry, c is 3, sorry, not 0. Since c is 3, it puts that c value into what we have, yes. And if we do that, Carefully, we will then have 13 being equal to minus b plus 5 into 3. And then what I will then have is 13. 5 times 3 is 15. So I will bring it to this other side. I will have minus 15 equals to minus b. So I have minus 2 is equal to minus b. And then, if you divide both by minus 1, you get B being equal to 2. Lastly, the next thing we need to do here is to say, let S be what? Obviously, there's no other linear factor you can see here. So, you assume any other number that have not been used before. Already, we've used 3. That let S be 3. Uh, let S be 1, sorry. We've used let X be 0. You can say let X be 2 now. Let X be equal to 2. And if you do that, you have 3 into 2 square again, plus 8 into 2 plus 13 is equal to a into 2 plus b into 2 minus 1 plus c into 2 square plus 2 of 2, 2 into 2 plus 5. And so this is what we would have. So this is what we have now. 41 on the left hand side and 2a plus b plus 13c if you simplify this on the left hand side but we've gotten the values of what in the values of c and b we got our c our c to be 3 and we got our b to be 2 we can substitute that into this if we do that we will have so upon solving we get our a to be equal to zero actually uh -huh. if it's substitute the value of c to be three and b to be two so if we have this we've got our a to be zero b to be two and then c to be three just come and substitute it into the question we have here the value of a to be zero 
the value of B to be 2 and the value of C to be 3. So our financer will look in like this. These are, these are finance. Since 0x will give me 0. So none of fighting that part on this part. So we have with only 2. So these are financer. Thank you. So our example 5 now. 2x squared plus 2x plus 10 all over x plus 1, x squared plus 9. So to solve this now, the first thing you also subject to would 1. But if it's here to one, you see that you don't need to divide here, actually. So you move to root 2. Do you have a linear factor there? If you have a linear factor, uh, there correspond the factor function of the form A all over S plus 1. And then, then plus... Now, the next factor I have at the denominator is X squared plus 9. That is not factorizable. And it's quadratic plus S squared raised to power 2. And because of that, I will write as BX plus C all over x squared plus 9 since it's not factorizable now the next thing to do is to join these two together if we join them we can try that on your own so here this is what when we join this is what we have and then we write the left hand side as well near here we have common denominators so we subtract out the common denominators if we eliminate the common denominators you'll be left with 2x squared plus 2x plus 10 and so this is what we have on the right hand side a into x squared plus 9 then bx plus c into x plus 1 and then we try eliminating now you know in elimination you say take any of the linear factor the linear factor we have one of the linear factor we have is x plus 1 x plus 1 you equate it to 0 obviously here s will be equal to minus 1 and so you can use that now to solve so i've gone ahead to substitute my minus 1 and if we do that this is what we have and then at the end of the day, on simplifying, for the left hand side here, or the right hand side, first of all, we have 10a. 10a. Because that's minus 1 square will give me 1 plus 9, 10 times a. 10a. Then plus, nothing will remain here. So none of the same plus again. Nothing will remain on this part. Everything here will go. Reason is because minus 1 plus 1 will give me 0. So everything here goes. So I'll be left with only 10a. And on this part, I will have 10. Because minus 1 square will give me 1 times 2, that is 2. So 2, yeah, 2 times minus 1 will give me minus 2. So 2 minus 2 will give me 0, then plus 10. So we have 10 here. And if you divide both sides by 10, you get A to be equal to 1. Yeah, I've gotten my A. The next thing now is to say let X be equal to, the next linear factor we have here is, we know we have BX plus C. So that X is a linear factor. Just say X is equal to 0. So that's a linear factor. You say let X be equal to 0. And we substitute it into this same uh, equation, this math equation here. So if we see what we have here. So we have this, and then you know, 10 will be on the left hand side is equal to here. We have 9a, 9a plus obviously a bit times zero is give me zero. So everything here is gone. Everything here is gone. Here we have c times one. So we have c, but we've gotten a. But A, we've got A to be what? A is equal to 1. So I can substitute that into this. So we have 10 is equal to 9 into 1 plus C. So then have see that C is equal to 1. So we've got C to be 1. We've got A to be 1. The next thing now is to use a value you've not used before. Since we've used X is equal to minus 1, and we've used X is equal to 0, we can say let X be 1. We've not used 1 before. So let X be equal to 1. Let X be equal to 1. Because there's no other linear factor remaining that we can equate to 0. So just let X be equal to 1. A number we've not used before. And if we do that, we have 2 into 1. We have 2 into 1. Yeah. So 1 square. 2 into 1 square plus 2 plus 10. Obviously, that will give us 14 on this right, the left hand side. And on this part, we have 10A. 10A plus... On this part, here yeah, we'll give this will give me two. So we have b plus c, which will give me two b plus two c. If you simplify this side. So at the end of the day, let's substitute our value of a and c we've gotten. We said our a was our a actually we got to be one, and then our b, our b we got that to be one as our sorry our c, we got our c, our c to be one, our c to be one as well. So substitute those two values into this so we have 14 being equal to being equal to i've gotten a to be one so that is 10 into one then plus i've gotten to be 
I've gotten my C to be one, that is two into one as well. So at the end of the day, you see that we have 14 minus 10 minus two being equal to two B. So at the end of the day, I have, what I have here is two is equal to two B. And then my B is equal to one. So this is what we would have. So I've gotten my A, B and C. Everything gave us one, one, one. So come to this part and substitute the value of your A, B and C. So my, I know my A is one, my B is one, and then my C is one. So my final answer will become, so this is our final answer, our final answer. So we just consider rule number four, rule number four now.